103 more rounds fought by Freddy Hernandez, who is also 12 years older than Jason Quigley. He's got a two-inch reach advantage as well. The height, though, favors Jason Quigley, but the biggest number here might be total rounds as well as you. All right, we set it up to Mark Fredo for the official introduction. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to Fantasy Springs Resort Casino here in Indio, California. This is Golden Boy Boxing on ESPN. Our main event this evening is scheduled for 10 rounds and will be contested for the NABF Middleweight Championship. It's brought to you by Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions and presented by Tecate, the official beer of boxing and Hennessy, never stop, never settle. The main event is sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission, the chairman, John Carvelli, the executive officer, Andy Foster. It's also sanctioned by the North American Boxing Federation. The president is Craig Hubble. The supervisor at ringside is Mo Noor. The judges here in this championship contest, Eduard Hernandez Sr., Alejandro Rochin, and Zachary Young. And controlling the action at the sound of the bell, the referee in charge is the doctor, Lou Moret. And now, live from Indio, California, 10 rounds for the NABF Middleweight Championship. Ladies and gentlemen, it's go time! Introducing first the challenger, fighting out of the blue corner. He weighed in at 159 and one half pounds. As a professional, his veteran record stands with 34 victories against nine defeats, 22 wins coming by way of knockout. He wears blue with red this evening and represents Mexico City, Distrito Federal, Mexico. Ladies and gentlemen, Freddy El Riel. His opponent fighting out of the red corner, the reigning and defending undefeated champion. He also weighed in at 159 and one half pounds. As a professional, his record consists of 14 bouts, 14 victories, 11 coming by way of knockout. Dressed in red and gold, he is the fighting pride of County Donegal, Ireland. The reigning, the defending NABF middleweight champion, please welcome Jason Quigley! Manica? Manica? Come on. I'm getting instruction in the dress here. Hey, the other niggas. Let's have a good clean fight. The day might come out. The dress has some skin on it. But I never come on that. Go to your corner and wait the bell. Good luck. Tonight's main event features Jason Quigley and Freddie Hernandez alongside Bernard Hopkins. I'm Bernardo Osuna. B-Hop, 10 years ago today, you were in the Stay ring. Back. Stay back. Do you remember who you were in the ring against? Felix Jason? Tito, Stay the back. great Trinidad. No, Kelly Pavlik. You no, were schooling no, no, Kelly no. It's Pavlik. 2001, I know. Oh, no, man. 10 Trinidad, years Trinidad ago. Trinidad was 2001. But yeah, Kelly Pavlik, I don't think he want to remember that day. <laughs> but listen, that Kelly Pavlik fight was, was a really good Good night for me in Atlantic City. A spectacular night on October 18th, 2008. A non-title fight for Bernard Hopkins, who after hearing about the Canelo deal with the zone, 365 million. Don't worry, he's not thinking about a comeback. Nice jab there from Freddy Hernandez, but you see the hand speed, the athleticism of Jason Quigley early on. Um, he's tall, he's lanky, he's got power, but he's also got some speed. When he used it correctly, and you know, early in the fight, you know, he, he's the type of fighter that I really like to see what he had in front of him, and sometimes that can be too negative to him, but I think he should just start off as being comfortable, being aware, and let his oh. hands go like he just did. Nice. That's the quickly I know that can come right out, throw combinations, sort of European style, and let it work for him and not against him. You see that quickness of Jason quickly and 
no doubt that Hernandez at age 39 with 44 bouts under his belt, you know, he's seen a lot of canvas over his uh, long career that started 17 years ago. You see, Quilly right now should make him pin another gear, make him fight faster, early, so now he can benefit, you know, when the slow pace come, he can go and keep it at a high rate where, where he won't be able to keep up. See him trying to pick apart Freddie Hernandez with the jab earlier, now with the right to the body. Hernandez, this is where he wants the fight to be because of the taller uh, fighter that he has in front of him. He wants to keep the fight in close. Yeah, and Quinley can take more chances because Hernandez is not a really fast guy, never really been, so he's a little older now, so you know he's not going to gain speed as he gets older. And then Quinley should right now take advantage of that like he's doing. Work the body and then sneak those punches up top. Wally Omatoso, the last man to beat Freddy Hernandez, but, you know, one of the fights that really got him back on, on board with boxing was a, a victory over Alfredo Angulo by unanimous decision, you know, despite a cut over his right eye, he was able to come away with the victory. And when you look at his record, I mean, he beat guys like Louis Colazzo, Demetrius Andre, uh, Aries Landi Lara, Andre Berto, Golden Johnson. Those are guys he lost to, actually, um, the last four. But he's been in against the best in the world. And that, that really is a lesson that he's tried to bring into the ring tonight. Hey, Hernandez just been walking here tonight. He's been around. You're ripping the kid's face off when you jab here. Honest, just for the first two or three rounds. You stick jab, stick jab, and ride. Ready? Honest, yeah, you can make it nice and easy, but just stick jab, stick jab, right hand. And, you know, like every now and again, you know the body work, the body shot. In. But don't be throwing no uppercuts and hooks yet. You know, just straight all the time. You can't even come in through. But don't let him wrestle yet, and don't let him rough you up inside. It's the only time he's in that round. You had a good 20 seconds on him, and then you let him come in and work inside. Just don't give him any, any encouragement. Ryoto Murata is a superstar in Japan where his fights are watched by over 20 million people. On Saturday night, the middleweight champion returns to Las Vegas to defend his WBA title against Rob Brandt. The Olympic gold medalist continues his U.S. takeover on ESPN Plus at 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific. I'll be heading to Vegas right after this fight. So Vegas, here I come. All right, and here comes Jason Quigley against Freddy Hernandez. And Freddy Hernandez's big wins were early on, you know, in the, the mid-2000s. Mike Enchondo and Demarcus Corley, Chop Chop in 2010. You know, Carson Jones in 2006. Jesus Sotocarazo will be headlining our next Golden Boy Boxing on ESPN show here November the 8th. That was in 2004, but he still, you know, keeps coming. All right, we bring in Beto Duran. What do you have from the corners, Beto? Well, I don't have anything in the corners. I got something from Donegal, Ireland. Now, McGuigan's bar is supposed to be closed, but there might be a couple hundred people in there having their own closed circuit You imparted for Jason Quigley. His mother, Muriel, is at home watching this fight also. All right, big push there from Jason Quigley, sending the folks in the pub a big shout out. Just had to show out for his folks back home in, in Donegal. And he said when he was living in LA, living in Marina del Rey in an apartment overlooking the beach, his backyard was Venice Beach. He said, I loved it, but it wasn't me. It reminds me a little bit of you, Behop. He wanted to be back home in, in the UK and really uh, be close to his family. And you see the change in how he's developing in the ring. Not only that, mentally, mentally, he wasn't there like he should have been, and he recognized that. And sometimes a fighter got to take a loss or, you know, get beaten badly to recognize that. But he realized that, you know, this is not me. He tried it, he learned from it, and now he made those adjustments. All right, well, the thing here is, he said it's, it's incredible to say, and people might not believe it, but that injury was the best thing that happened to me. It got me to refocus 
and, and really become who I am and figure out who I am because a year away from the boxing, when it's been your identity where that's what people know you for, it really taught me a lot about myself. And so Jason Quigley now, he's the one that gets pulled down here in round number two. But, you know, self-discovery is a wonderful thing. It's a confident booster. He was adamant about it. He was consistent with his conversation. And he wants to right now take this second really chance that he has and make the best out of it. Trying to work the body with a right is Jason Quigley. And that peekaboo style, that you know, head movement, using his legs. He said, I wanted to be back to who I was. You know, that's Ten what seconds. John Engel uh, really taught him is that style, which is what really made him shine as an amateur. <laughs> hey! Hey, hey, hey. Uh. Uh. This Saturday on ESPN, we start with Sports Center at 7 a.m. Eastern. It's college game day, followed by three of the best college football games of the day. Then it's LeBron James' regular season home debut with my Lakers against James Harden, CP3, and the Rockets in prime time. Then we'll cap it off the way we started it with Sports Center. Like everything else, you can always watch on the ESPN app from anywhere. All right, Bernardo Osuna, Bernard Hopkins here at the Fantasy Springs Resort and Casino. The second comeback fight for Jason Quigley after suffering a horrific injury to the tendons in his right hand, as well as a fracture in the opening card of Golden Boy Boxing on ESPN, March 23rd of 2017. He's in against a tough, grizzled veteran in Freddy Hernandez. What do you think of Quigley's performance so far? Well, I, I think it's average. I think he should step it up and make a statement. You know, not necessarily a knockout, but just look a little bit more energized. I mean, Hernandez is loving this type of speed. I mean, he can go many rounds like this if he's not being pushed and not being, you know, alert to where he got to throw more punches or he's going to get knocked out. You see the mouse that was created by the left hook of Quigley under the right eye of Freddy Hernandez. That was one of 40 punches that have landed in the first couple of rounds for Jason Quigley. I think that left hook was the most significant one we've seen. Heavy hands from Jason Quigley. He cupped that right hand, though. Just trying to find his range here in the third round. All right, Beto, what's going on in uh, Jason Quigley's right, corner stop, leading stop, into round three? Stop. He needs to stick to the basics. His corner saying that he's going away from the jab. He's not throwing the one-two. They said he's trying to do too much and put on too much of a show. That he's trying to get out there with too much flair. Go back to the basics. Keep it simple, and he has control of this fight. Oh, no, no, no. Quigley has a really good left hook. I like to see him use it. It's like a whip. He, when he when he throw that left hook the proper way, it's it's really effective. He talked about wanting to get back to those basics. He said, look, training with Manny Robles taught me to fight, taught me to be a warrior no, no, with no, those no, Mexican no, no, warriors no, 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 in the ring. Bad. He said, but this style suits me best. But it seems like he kind of likes the, the identity of the animal as he was being called before. If he settled Stop. down Stop. and right. let those punches Stop work right. in a right wrestling. perspective, then it not only will it look sharper, but he would get more more results. And uh, Hernandez has seen this before. I mean, this, ain't, this is not new to him. Uh, he's been in against top-notch opposition. Has a Freddy Hernandez against six world champions. Oh, nice right hand there from Jason Quigley. You see that one-two effective for the Irishman here as round three comes to an end. Ten seconds. Yes, uno. 
ださあさあさあはい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、In the corner of Freddy Hernandez, his trainer Jose Luis Sosa was not at all impressed. By what he's seen from Jason Quigley. What he did say though is, Freddie, you gotta let your hands go. You gotta let this guy know that you're in this fight. Well, if Freddie realized that he has opportunities, you should take him. Uh, Quigley is throwing more sharp right hands now as the fight gets deep into the round. And, and that might be a factor later on for, for Quigley to, to really get Hernandez's attention. Don't wrestle. Stop. Protect yourself. Quigley's thrown 195 punches, landed 54 compared to 90 thrown and 21 landed. The percentages are not very high for either one of these fighters. I would have expected a higher connect rate from Quigley uh, because Hernandez is a static fighter. The one-two for Quigley is the punch I see. That's going to be effective. He, he threw these punches early on, but now they're starting no, no, to hit the no, target. No, 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 Hernandez no, no, no. is slowing down. And Quilly seemed to be finding range with that straight right hand after the jab. A lot of early knockouts for Jason Quigley. He's only fought past the fourth round three times in his pro career. Hernandez keeping his hands up high, but he should fire once those hands make connections. With, with Quigley, he should fire real hard no matter where they go. He should just try to touch something of Quigley's body. All right, now we see blood trickling from the left uh, eye uh, of Jason uh, uh, Quigley. Uh, there you get a close up, and now the Irishman is cut. And that comes from a punch, I believe it was the right hand. We were no later, but I think it was a straight right hand from Hernandez. For the second time he's been cut, the first time was against Mark Christopher Atkins. That was the left eye as well. And Hernandez sees the blood, and as a veteran, he wants to take over this fight here in round number four. This is the fight style that Hernandez is, is at his best. Ugly fight inside, throwing punches from all over. Scrappy type of fight. This is where Hernandez get his his pound of flesh right now. You know, his exact words in our fighter meetings, V Hop, was, I'll try to slow the pace. I have a lot of experience. I will never be faster than him. He's a 160, and I'm a natural 154 fighter. But I said, let's do it. The biggest problem is if he connects one punch, it can end. But if I connect, I also can end this fight. Well, he just connected two. That is Hernandez, a right and then a left hook behind that. And you know, Quilly Lays didn't seem kind of stern on them punches. There's that one, two from Jason Quigley. He lunged right there. I mean, Quigley's making a lot of mistakes here early on, but it's just that Hernandez hasn't been able to capitalize. It seems that Quigley is getting caught up in the passion of it and not toning it down to be able to go back to the basic jab, the right hand, and set it up. This is the type of war that favors Freddy Hernandez. The first of maybe the rounds that he's been able to take control here through four. I'm not going to do the cause. All right. You, you, you're knocking the face off him. You know when you're slap right him. Honestly, yeah, you just got to do it simple with him. Drink it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Here, 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 here. Deep breathe. You okay? Huh? Okay. Yeah. Honest. Deep breathe. Straight. Just straight and then body it. Every round. Yeah, easy. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Don't make it hard. Let him wrestle in. You're working yeah. inside. Don't swing with him. On his chest, and just one, two, one, two. Then work him in. One, two. Keep him off you with that stiff jab. Put, put, put him 
doing good work in the corner of Jason Quigley both on the left guys, side. Both guys got the same idea. Here's the left hand, and then you see the left hand come back from, from Hernandez. You know, both guys got the same ideas in the same position. Great thinking. Great minds think alike. And here you see the big lob of Vaseline with coagulant mixed in over the left eye of Jason Quigley. And here comes Hernandez trying to close the distance on the fighter from Donegal Island. I don't know why trainers do that, stop, even stop. thinking that it's going to be like, you know, stop. It comes right off. There's a cut now on the right eye of Freddy Hernandez as the blood starts to gush. And that was a headbutt. You see the blood trickling over the right eyelid. And that was a nasty hit, but they literally clash heads. Okay, good. All right, the referee and the doctor are going to allow it to continue, but you see that it's about a one-inch gash. Here's the cut and how it was caused in the right side of your screen. You know, both guys clinched, both guys hit both heads. I think it was int not intentional. Both guys ran into each other. All right, so now both guys bleeding. I would imagine that you're going to see a lot of urgency, especially from the side of Freddy Hernandez. What are the thoughts in the corner after that big cut, Beto? Lo tenemos en nuestro ritmo. We have him in our rhythm. This is exactly the kind of fight that they wanted for Freddy. He said that they needed to come out, make it fail. You know, make it ugly. And this is exactly what this is trying to become. Quickly, his corner, they didn't expect the fight to go this long. All right, well, it has, and now we're in round number five, and both guys are cut up, but the most severe cut is that on the face of Freddy Hernandez. How do you deal with a cut that is so big and is gushing so much blood, B-Hop? You let your hands go like Hernandez is doing because you know that the referee's paying close attention. It could be stopped based on a cut. This is his really last big shot at a title shot or a title shot like this. So Hernandez right now has nothing to lose. You must continue oh. to throw punches, and he did. Nice right counter from Freddy Hernandez. He gets caught as he was walking straight back, maybe admiring his work a little bit too much. It was Hernandez, but I mean, look at the bloody mess on his face and on his chest. It's all coming from the right eye. But you have to respect the guy like Hernandez, who can easily backpedal and not take any more of this, but he still continued to come and winning this round with the cut. Last two rounds, Freddy Hernandez has been able to impose his will on Jason Quigley. Quigley moving his head, making Hernandez miss. That's what John Ingle wants out of Quigley. A lot more boxing skill, not so much the warrior that we're used to seeing. Nice one, too, from Quigley. Quigley is at his best. If he continue to do things that, like this that his trainer is telling him, then it, this fight will be like easy, but he makes it hard by being on the ropes, trying to trade, and not actually keeping his hands where they're supposed to be. Hernandez trying to walk down Jason Quigley, hunting him down. Quigley with a nice counter left. Good defense there on the one-two from Hernandez, but then he gets caught with the jab first, and then the second follow-up right hand by Jason Quigley. Halfway through this fight, let's see how both guys do with their cuts in their respective corners. Ah. both corners working on the respective cuts the left eye of Jason Quigley, but it's the right eye of Freddy Hernandez that's really causing the most commotion because that's a deep cut and it's about an inch long, B-Hop. Let's yeah. see what kind of work they can do. Look at that. The blood just gushing right out of there. And I mean, the ultimate question is, what kind of work did they do and how will it hold up? Because we still got five rounds to fight. We got five rounds to fight. And if Quigley just got hit with a right hand yes, he did. and almost like buckled, 
Does Quinley know that this is a fight that he can make the referee stop and look at that cut again? He must continue to throw his punches and throw them right at that eye. If I was him, Quinley, I'd be aiming for that eye right now. I mean, a big right hand from Freddie Hernandez. And Hernandez is dangerous right now because he knows this fight can be stopped at any time. And you know what? He has the power to pick Quinley down. He just proved it when he landed that nice right hand. And Jason Quigley was forced to take a couple of steps back and actually regroup. Quigley breathing from the mouth here in round number six. And this might give Hernandez a break because Quigley should be right now throwing sharp punches. Stop! Aiming for that cut. Break. Letting the referee continue to do what he's doing now. Looking at that eye. Beto, your thoughts? No, no, no. Stop. Hey, Bernard, what you just said right now about going to that cut, that's exactly what they told Quigley in his corner. They're also mad. You can hear some frustration. They said, what are you doing winging punches? Why are you trying to trade with him? Jason, throw your jab, control, one, two, go straight at him. They said he's going too far, too wide, and he's just like that, swinging and missing. And he's getting caught as Freddy Hernandez now has Jason Quigley where he wants him, but Quigley also has power here in the sixth round. The legs of Jason Quigley quite wide. He's breathing from the mouth. This is a war, b -hop, and this is exactly the type of fight that Freddy Let Hernandez in his stop, corner would have dreamed of. He craved of this fight. You know, Quigley is just leaning back. He's not ducking with his hands up. He's leaning back, and he's meeting a punch that's coming from a distance, and that's a no-no in boxing. When Jason Quigley decides to box, uses length, uses speed, he does a lot better as he now turns southpaw momentarily, then he goes orthodox and lands a nice shot. This is the type of fight, when you say you're ready for the big time, you're ready for uh, the championship, the best out there, you must suck it up, you must find a way to win this fight and win this round. Low blow there from Freddy Hernandez, making it slow down, ah, Jason ah. Quigley. Both fighters lost a lot of blood, and both fighters are really digging deep down. Let's see who can be conditioned to take it into the later rounds. Round six coming to a conclusion in the desert. Oh, big right. This is the Hennessy corner cam as we listen in to Jason Quigley's corner, John Engel. Don't get past the jab, he's bending down, he's swinging. Stand up straight, Paul. Paul, need a good, good round. I mean, a big punch or no? I say no. I mean, it came, but it didn't hit the target. I was at the end of the round, so round seven of a scheduled 10 round fight. The corner of Jason Quigley, not at all happy with how he's handling things. They want him to use his boxing skill, use his speed, use his movement. He's in the southpaw stance momentarily. Your thoughts on what you've seen from Quigley through the first six rounds? I see resistance. I see that he's making it a little bit too hard for himself, but he's been forced to fight too. And, and you know, Hernandez came right out just now and threw a straight left hand to the body. And those the punches that slow your legs down for later the next round or two. But Hernandez, look, I take my hat off for him. He's still there. He's still dangerous. And you know what? Quinley better not sleep. He better not go to you know sleep on this fight, or he will go to sleep and stand that stone punches and punches. And I mean, what a great job the corner has done on the cut of Freddie Hernandez. When you we send it now to Beto to see how they've been working on that cut. 
they're not concerned about that cut, Bernie. They said that Freddie always cuts, so they're used to it. Now they're worried because the blood is going into his eye, but they've told Freddie, hey, you've done this in the past, Wipe away, get going, let us take care of it. You see him right now pawing at it, but he said he's used to it. One thing that they said, there's a big difference in conditioning. They said Freddie's in better shape than Quigley. At times it does look like that, B-Hop. Quigley's been breathing hard since about the fourth round. Especially, yeah, he has been because he's been pressured. And you know the resistance of the Hernandez is not letting up. Even when Hernandez is not punching, he's still coming forward, and that's mental pressure. Left hook from Freddie Hernandez there proving that he's also in this fight. Tonight's main event, dramatic because of the blood that you see on the face and on the body of both fighters. You see the one-two combination from Freddy Hernandez. And when your opponent lands looping long shots like that, that's telling. That's telling. That's one is Quilly is standing straight up when he moves back, which is dangerous. And he's not moving at all right now because those legs have been slowed down by those combinations. Nice left hook from Freddy Hernandez, who now with that bloody face continues to come forward. The fans here at the Fantasy Springs Resort and Casino getting behind him. Yeah, and that's the motivation that Hernandez has because he recognized that A, that he is getting results. Ray Hernandez slow and looping, but trying to find a home on the body of Jason Quigley who connects a beautiful right hand and that's what Quigley's capable of doing. But just not enough consistency from the Irishman here in the seventh round. He's walking backwards. Hernandez is walking him down. We saw Freddy Hernandez dancing his way back to the corner. A completely different demeanor in Jason Quigley's corner. Let's uh, listen in. Well, he continue to work back up straight and go get hit every time because he's back up straight. You need to protect himself more when you back up because as long as Hernandez continue to throw punches, he will connect when you're backing up with your head up in the air. Not all of them are connecting for Freddy Hernandez, but Jason Quigley also is not throwing many punches in the last few rounds, and I think that's been a big difference. It's the work rate of Freddy Hernandez in the last couple of rounds, and the fact that he's connecting solid punches that have really helped him out. Yeah, even if he throw Hernandez two or three punches, one of those punches might get through. A couple of half got through early in the fight, and you know, Quigley, you know, he's tired, he's a little spent, and to be backing up like that is putting yourself in a vulnerable situation. Headbutt there from Hernandez as he was walking in. Quigley takes it without a problem. Ooh, nice check left hook there from Jason Quigley. What does losing that much blood do to you in the ring, B-Hop? Well, I, I, I don't think it weakens you, but I just think it's more of a psyche on both guys when they see blood running down their face, their face and then chest. Um, I, I don't think it make it a difference in energy-wise or strength or anything they got to do with that. I think it's more mental. Wow, one-two combination from Quigley and the quick response from Hernandez who lands a one-two of his own and then comes back with an overhand right. Seeing your blood can make you more motivated yep. either to get the guy or, 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 or just throw punches knowing that they could be stopped. And both of these guys fighting that way. All right, we listened in to Jason Quigley's corner and the concern they have. Beto, what's the demeanor in Freddie's corner? It's a party over here. Freddie walked back to the corner. Tucanas and North, the, the Tijuana were jamming, right? Tucanazo, you saw Freddie dancing. And if Ponce de Leon got up, big smile, his trainer smiled. And Freddie said, I love this. Me encanta eso is what he said. So this doesn't seem like the guy who's worried or concerned about that cut at all. He's just happy to be in this fight after eight rounds. 
Jose Luis Rosa will listen into his instructions. Go get him. Castigalo cuando tire el Punish him when he throws the right hand. Recta, castigalo. Sígalo castigando, güey. Keep punishing him. Eso es. Castigale. That's it. He's throwing that body punches now, and that's what is. It seems that he feel that he has found something, and I seen him throw two straight right hands to that body. Let's see if he continues as the round gets deeper. Play the night, trying to land that looping left hand. You see when he commits the punching, and it's not as looping a shot. Quigley is a lot better than Freddie Hernandez, like we're seeing here. Straight shots punishing Hernandez when it was the corner of Hernandez asking him to punish Jason Quigley. When he settled down and used his youth, his speed, his quickness, his, his, his all-around skills, he's a different fighter. Only when he tries to slug and make it tough where it's even up. But Hernandez had one chance to maul and brawl. And that's exactly what he's doing here in the eighth round. A bloody mess here at Fantasy Springs Resort and Casino. We got two more rounds of action coming up. Vivo, te estás tratando de boxear, güey. Te estás tratando de boxear. Quítame los guantes, Ponce. Está bien, está bien, está bien. Bien, güey. Hay que cerrar, güey. Estos rounds hay que cerrar la verga, güey. ¿Sí me entiendes? Beto talked about the fact that Freddy Hernandez's corner was not worried. Well, how could they be? He's been cut 16 times as a professional in 44 fights. So pretty much every third fight, this man's bleeding. Yeah, he's bleeding. I mean, I think they got to check him before he comes to the ring and then he's not bleeding because that's a lot of cuts. But he's used to it. Look, he's not worried about it. He's ready to come right out, get right back into the mix. I, I think he made it to a point where he, you know, got adjusted to it. This is the first time that I see uh, his cut man leave so much Vaseline to the point where it's kind of dipping down no, 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 and bothering his oh, eye a little bit. Oh, oh, oh. What's that like when you get that Vaseline in your eye? Well, it stings, first of all, and it blocks your vision. And, you know, the first punch is going to come off as it did. Now he can see. So he can thank Jason Quigley for taking that big lob of <laughs> Vaseline off his face. And now Quigley wants to knock the block off. Quigley has that stance that's so perfect for jab right hand. And that's the punch, to me, has been effective. Yeah, Quigley needs to throw straighter punches. Stop trying to loop uh, punches and, and land from, from far away. Just throw those quick, straight shots, and he can out-pump uh, Hernandez, just like he did here in round nine. But what he's doing is dangerous. He's coming in with his chin up and his left hand down, which can be a counter punch by Hernandez, will put Quilly in quiz street. Great observation there from Bernard Hopkins, a man who, by this point, would have exploited that flaw as Hernandez tries to do it, and then he gets caught with a nice straight right hand from Jason Quigley, who follows it up with a left hook. The whipping left hook by Quigley. Just got hit with that counter right hand. The left hand, Hernandez is paying attention to it, and it seemed to be throwing more right hands. If Quigley don't want to get hit with that, that right hand, he, he should keep it up or stay out of the range. Look at that speed flash there by Jason Quigley, and you see how it bothers Freddy Hernandez having to reset as Quigley is ready to receive him with more punches. I don't know why he then goes to looping shots. We just saw what worked. Why not keep doing it? Speed is power, consistency, discipline. That's what take place in this type of matter. If Quigley want to know the next level, the next level is to do that. All right, Beto, what's going on in Quigley's corner? Bernardo, what you just said right now, how come he's not doing those combinations? How come he's not... Fight, uh, fighting because that's the same thing his corner said. They feel like they're winning this fight easily, but they said that they have to get rid of that brawler mentality that Quigley has had. They've only had 10 months with them. They said if he would have just boxed from the opening round and do what he's been doing in this round, they wouldn't even be in this situation. It's been frustrating for them in that corner. I can understand exactly why, because Quigley is in a firefight against a 39-year-old fighter. If this is a prospect who they want to build as a future world champion, I'm sure anybody at 160 who's watching this tonight, B-Hop says, 
Bring him on. Yeah, you gotta give Hernandez credit though. He's tough, he's a veteran. He's not gonna quit. Definitely. We knew what we were getting in Hernandez coming in, but I think we all expected a better performance from Jason Quigley. All right, what have we seen this evening here? Early on in this fight, it was the speed of Quigley and those nice long shots working for him. Yeah, I mean, he's consistent with that earlier, then fell into sort of like a survival mode, but he didn't have to. Round four, look, Hernandez continued to put pressure for that, but Quigley continued to throw punches when he needed, but he was forced to fight. Here we go again, clash of heads. Really bad cut. Hernandez been fighting round after round with that same cut. So they go to tell you that Quigley is not really doing what he's supposed to do as his corner is struck him. Again. Hernandez Constant keeps coming pressure. forward, Pihak. Yes, never giving up, still throwing punches, being out speed, being out gun, but never giving up. Same thing here in round eight. Hernandez is coming forward. Quilly is throwing it straight with that hand, right hand. I would like to see Quilly throw more straight combinations, though. All right, this is turning into a lot closer fight than many of us expected coming in to the 10th and final round. Quigley out landing Hernandez by 42 punches over nine rounds. Let's see who's got the heart of a lion to close out this 10th and final round. Much respect to the performance, not so much the performance, but the effort given by both fighters tonight. I got a feeling that this is going to be a round where people are probably going to be like, wow, because both guys got to know that they got to lay everything down the line. Willie has to make an exam, uh, uh, a statement, and also Fernandez got to make his last hurrah. Quickly trying to land straight shots. Hernandez blocking those with the peekaboo defense here. Nice left hook from Jason Quigley, but it's just one shot at a time. You know, Quigley could not box him. His corner wanted to do that, do that earlier. Now he's doing it, so he's still got a little spring in his legs. And Hernandez can't find him, just missed the right hand. Didn't even get close to touching him to the body. You can understand the frustration from John Engel in the corner of Jason Quigley when this is the type of fight he could have been putting on from first round. It would have been a clinic in his favor, but he let Hernandez in the fight because he made it a firefight. Every Irishman I know don't want to move backwards. They want to fight. And look, Quigley is an Irishman and he wants to fight. And every Mexican fighter wants to come forward and get into a slugging match. And that's exactly what Hernandez got this evening against Quigley. So everybody's happy in terms of representing their nationality here as Quigley and Hernandez, Mexico and Ireland, doing what they know how to do best in the ring. Okay, stop. Break, let him roll. Step back. Fox. Entering the final minute of this 10th and final round. When they hit that 30 seconds, all hell gonna break out because both gods is waiting to preserve the energy. Quigley outboxing Hernandez here in the 10th round. Trying to put this in his pocket, but I think if his corner feels that they have this fight, spot one, I think they Step might be mistaken. It's a very back. close fight in my Step book. Back. Both of you. And here's that 30 second mark you were talking about, B Hop. between Jason Quigley, the unbeaten fighter out of Donegal, Inc., Ireland, taking on Freddy Hernandez in his 44th professional fight out of Mexico City, living in Southern California, had that deep gash over his right eye since the fifth round. And boy, what a great fight they both gave us, B-Hop. Energy, determination, 
I believe Quilly won the fight. He pulled it out, but he had some rounds. And you should look at this tape and correct the things you could have did. I agree with you. It's going to be a close fight. Quickly cut over the right and left eyes. And we will have the official decision from the judges here at the Fantasy Springs Resort and Casino. Did the old veteran pull off a fast one on the young up-and-comer? We'll find out when we return. This is Golden Boy Boxing on ESPN from the desert in California. Golden Boy Boxing on ESPN is presented by Tecate, the official beer of boxing. And it's brought to you by Hennessy. Never stop, never settle. And by Chuck Liddell, Tito Ortiz 3, live from the Forum on pay-per-view November 24th. And by Canelo Fielding, live from Madison Square Garden December 15th. Tickets are on sale now. We invite you to stay here for Sports Center tonight at midnight Eastern with Scott Van Pelt after Stanford, Arizona State on ESPN. He'll break down the primetime debut of Josh Rosen for the Cardinals, plus post-game reactions and analysis from the Red Sox Astros Game 5 as the first team punched their ticket to the World Series. And can his hot streak of picking underdog winners continue? Who will SVP take as his underdog this week? Sports Center tomorrow or tonight, depending on where you are after the Pac-12 football on ESPN and the ESPN app. All right, solid performance by both fighters. Freddie Hernandez came down here and said, boxing won tonight because as a 39-year-old B-Hop, I told you it was not going to be easy for him. I don't know if he gets the decision, but he gave a great performance. Yes, he did. All right, let's take it in to Mark Frido for the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen here in Indio, California, let's make some noise, show our appreciation for these two warriors. <laughs> Having gone the 10 round distance in this championship main event, we now go to the judges' scorecards. Judges Alejandro Rochin and Zachary Young scored this one 98-92. Edward Hernandez Sr. saw it 99-91. Your winner by unanimous decision, 
still undefeated and still the NABF middleweight champion, the pride of County Donegal, Ireland, Jason Quigley. So the victory, I think, was deserved by Quigley, but not by those scorecards, B Hop. It no. was a way closer fight yeah, than that. It definitely was. And you know, take your hat off to Hernandez. He put a gallop performance. All right, Beto, what are the thoughts of Quigley and Hernandez? A uh, real cool moment right there. Freddie comes over and says, Jason, you're the champion. He was telling us that boxing won the night. I'm pretty sure your corner said this was more difficult than you should have made it. But how did you feel tonight? You know, I felt great. I knew coming into this fight, this was a big test for me. Freddie has boxed for the world title. He's been in with the likes of Demetrius Andre, Zerilanda, you know. This here was my 15th pro fight, and uh, I learned a lot in here tonight, and that's exactly what this game's all about. They're watching your back in Donegal. It's breakfast time in <laughs> Ireland right now. God knows what they're taking for breakfast. I'm sure it's a few pints of Guinness. Jason Quigley stays undefeated, Bernie. And it was the third time in his career that he's gone the entire 10 rounds. Thank you very much, Beto, for that interview.